Hey everybody, it's your friend Moonhorse here. Uh, I'm back again to read more stories. This one was actually sent to me privately, so I will not be naming names, but I'm just going to read it to you as it is. This is another wonderful Neckbeard story. So, I don't know, let's get right into it, huh? Hi, Moonhorse. Hi! I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> Sorry. I chose to send this story specifically to you because I know that with your voice and attitude, you can do it justice. Well, thank you. I'd also prefer to remain anonymous. We can do that. God knows what parts of the internet this beardy being lurks in. And I don't want to risk it any more than I already am. Uh, sorry in advance, English is not my primary language. Sure, it's fine. Let's, let's read this wonderful story, shall we? It all happened last year. For context, I'm a girl, 23 at the time, freelance concept artist for video games, but still studying to hone my craft. My current school has various classes, all centered on the video game industry, game design, programming, 3D graphics, and of course, concept art. We all have our individual classes, but for the last semester we all join together, divide into three teams, and develop a complete game. I was chosen to be the leader for the concept artist in my team. Cool. Seems cool, right? That's why I said it. And it would be. But as everyone working in the industry knows, well, working everywhere for that matter, it just takes one member of the team not cooperating with the team to make it a big fucking Jenga tower that is game development a just collapse. I don't expect the perfect team. There's no such thing. But this one was... Oh, it was catastrophic. Especially because of him. Especially because of 3D Beard. As you might have guessed, he was in 3D graphics. He didn't have a beard. He was almost completely hairless, actually. Or a fedora. But he made up for them in body odor. He oozed sweat as if a thousand whores that hadn't bathed in a year all re reunited in Vatican City. And that's a, that's a wonderful fucking metaphor. And nice guyness. Ugh. And as we all know, children, it's not the fedora they wear, but the fed aura they exude. He was tall, fat, wore glasses, and always wore the same two sweat-drenched game t-shirts. You could literally smell him from the other side of the school. It's not a big school, but still. He seemed to eat nothing other than junk food, worked on the game on the days that we had eight-hour classes, and during lunch break you'd see him always going to the nearest fast food or kebab stand and return with a massive quantity of food, shoveling it down, producing a mess of sauces and saliva. Ew. The first time I saw him, the first meeting of the team, he seemed kind of normal, uh, sweaty as hell, talking very loud with his childlike nasal voice, but nothing really more than that. Almost the whole time, while we discussed what kind of game we wanted to make, mechanics, aesthetics, etc., he sat by himself, drawing something on his sketch pad, interrupting only to make comments and suggestions on how the game should be made, completely out of nowhere. But we were just kind of throwing ideas around, brainstorming and all of that, so I didn't mind. Now, among the concept artists, there's this girl we'll call M, that was, and still is, a very good friend of mine. M dropped out to pursue other studies, but we keep in touch. She was the one in charge of writing down all of our ideas for the game. She was just the sweetest, complimenting everyone who said something. We're all excited about this project. 3D Beard notices this and took it all in the wrong ways possible. Oh boy. It's not easy to describe the cringe I felt in a few minutes after, but I can try. After three hours of discussing during the break, 3D Beard calls myself and him over. Hey girls, yeah, your concept artist, right? Uh, yeah. Come take a look at this and give me your artistic opinion. <laughs> An artistic opinion was not what he was looking for, I'm afraid. 
He passed his sketchbook to M, and, well... The drawing was a very poorly drawn anime scene, with him, uh, slimmed down quite a bit and way more handsome, at the center, fucking huge, and the active, dispensing deep and wise advice on how to make gains to a mass of puny mortals, the rest of the team, that surrounded him, all with thumbs up to his immense knowledge. I was there too, drawn with my distinctive gigantic scarf around my neck, and for some reason, a pair of horns and a devil tail? Well, maybe because I was a little harsher on the ideas for the game and critique some of them? Fuck knows. But the creepiest part was on 3D Beard's right, drawn slightly bigger than the others, you guessed it, M. With her hands joined and heart-shaped eyes, another heart surrounding her, looking at 3D Beard like he's Prince Charming or some shit. This guy's got a fucking ego, holy shit! Luckily it wasn't porn, like I was afraid it might be, but I assure you, the cringe was unbearable nonetheless. He had drawn M like she was his beloved and subservient waifu. And fucking showed it to her, too. I was disgusted and creeped out, so you can imagine how M must have felt in that moment. On top of that, M's into girls, and currently dating one. See, this, this is you, says 3D Beard pointing at her, like he hadn't just done a terribly cringy and invasive thing. And then he smiled. Now, I'm kind of blunt and sincere person, so I always tell the truth to people's faces, even if it may come out as a bit rude. Because things that happened to me in the past have taught me that not doing so results in having undesirable people in your life. So I just kind of stood there, looking him in the eyes, like, what the fuck? But M, even though she was directly involved and way more creeped out than me, utters a, it's nice, uh, thanks, I guess. Which he took as a, I agree with your drawing, and I'm yours always and forever. Please marry me. Because for the rest of the semester, he continued pestering her. To the point that myself and some other friends always had to keep an eye on her, escort her to the bathroom and lunch break, fearing that he might try something more than just to annoy her. Luckily, that never happened. So let's go on to the story of how he ruined our game. Oh boy. During the whole year, he was nothing more than a nuisance. To be honest, he wasn't the only problem we had, because the vast majority of our jerk-ass game designers dropped out without telling the team, and we had to be helped by teachers. They weren't much present either. Now, the whole 3D department depended on us, concept artists, to deliver in time so that they could base their works on our art. And so we did. We were always on time. We had decided to go for a diesel punk sci-fi kind of aesthetic and delivered some pretty kick-ass concepts for them to work on. It was a four-player based game, so the first thing we had to design was the four-player characters and then hand them over. 3D Beard took it upon himself to model and rig the characters, which was a pretty fucking big deal. Maybe he wasn't a decent person or a decent artist, but he might be a decent 3D artist, I thought. I was, uh, I was wrong. The following months were a plethora of missed deadlines, badly sculpted characters, and him not giving a single fuck about what he was doing to the game because he was busy playing the ones he had at home and not bothering to do his job. On top of that, he never accepted any help, advice, or critique in any way and always played the victim role every time an error was addressed. The shoulder of a character was broken and badly modeled. It's not my fault, it's the program. I can't do anything about it. The character was badly rigged, it clipped, or it didn't move. You guess it, the program. Whenever someone tried to poke some sense into him, even the guys from his own team that had way too much work to do to be able to fix his mess, he took it like a personal attack. He insulted them, refused to take any critique from the teachers as well. Whined because doing his job was so much harder than anybody else's. So on and so forth. This went on almost to the end of the project. One day he's nagging at me, complaining about things not working. Things he did himself. 
and blaming the concept artists that made overly complex concepts. And I just kind of lost it. I kind of swore at him in the middle of class and sent his ass packing. I didn't want to hear him blaming others for his own mistakes anymore. This caused a chain reaction, and almost everybody seemed to go off on him at once. It was, it was glorious. For the remaining classes, he stayed silent, not bothering anyone, and stopped nagging at him. It was the most useful thing he'd ever done. A 3D artist from another team came and helped us out, gracing that poor, poor character models with a bit of animation. The game came out a bit crooked anyway, but luckily it was on my first year, and I'm now a much better game designer and have a better awesome team. I only see 3D Beard in the halls now. We don't even speak. I'd burn myself alive if he tried. His body odor still haunts the walls. Sadly, he ruined the life of another team, with some of my classmates in there as well, to the point that he almost caused the complete destruction of their newest build. He is now exiled to the realm of modeling pipes. Just simple pipes. Tubes. And apparently he can't even do that decently. Thanks, Moonhorse, if you decide to read this story. Well, I just did. And I hope you enjoyed it. I really did. Also, as you may have noticed, 3D Beard didn't fail his class. How is still a fucking mystery to me. And there's another year left. So I might have some more stories on him. I hope not. But I might. Oh boy. How many times, kids, have you worked with somebody who is just completely unproductive, who didn't help in any way in the slightest when it came to getting the fucking work done that you had to do? This this story reminds me of when I had to do work with Kay. And Kay was a beard that I knew back in the day, if you guys didn't already know that, and you may not. Um any time and I would have to ask him for help when I had to do yard work and that was the worst because it was always too hot and there were always too many mosquitoes and I remember specifically he said that it's really hot mosquitoes are really biting me I want to go inside why can't I have to be out here it's February there are no mosquitoes and it's not hot the reason he wants to go inside more than anything is because he just wants to play video games you see, like 3D Beard, Kay also wanted to be a game designer. Except that he actually did fail his classes. And I don't know what he's doing now. But, yeah, when he was a... He was in classes for game design and all this other stuff. Apparently he didn't realize that the technical aspect of doing these things involves a lot of technicality work. And he really, really didn't like that. So he tended to get really, really mad about it. And then he went from wanting to make games to write scripts for games to do all this other stuff. And he just kept trying to find some way to make himself work in the gaming industry. Except that all of these things are technical things and require a lot of work. Which is a thing that he really didn't want to do. So having him help with yard work is the worst possible thing because all he did was complain. And then when he had to actually do intellectual work, the thing that he claimed to excel at, he also only just complained. Is it a big shock that he's also kind of an incel now? Because, yeah, he's a pretty big incel now. <sighs> this guy, however, 3D Beard, it just... Ugh. I I'm sorry you guys have to work with him. He sounds like a fucking prick. He's just complaining about shit all the time and then not doing the things he's supposed to do. Const he seems to be the, the primary reason for missing a lot of deadlines, too, according to this story, is that he's just forever fucking intentionally missing them because working is hard. Well, maybe you need to work in another industry there, buckaroo, because it just is not going to fucking work out if that's the fucking case. So, with that being said... Thank you all for watching. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, you can support this channel uh, by donating to Patreon or by buying something in the merch store. That would be really cool. And if you have your own story that you'd like to send me, you can do it by sending it to r slash moonhorse stories. I check it every day. I will be there. There are links to all that and more in the description below. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye.